girl i took a much needed content break like when i say much needed much needed i didn't think it was gonna take a month but i needed a month i do want to say thank you to everyone that reaches out to me that prays for me like just all the positive messages that i get randomly randomly but at the perfect time so thank you to everyone that reached out just to send encouraging words to me or you know supporting things that i do post on my other platforms shout out to you we got some great content coming i just want to make sure that as an influencer i'm not letting personal things and things that i'm going through affect the content that i give you guys so we're back in a good place god is good <laughs> Who got a good and honestly i wanted to start with something really lighthearted. i asked you guys on my community tab if you wanted to get a girlfriend's review and y'all are just like low whatever you put out we want to see and you know what that's a blessing <laughs> thank you that is a blessing but i also want to make sure that the content that i put out is actually something that i love to do i'm passionate about but you guys actually want to see it as well so you know that that's the whole point of this right for you guys to watch and interact with the content so this is my first ever show series show review and that should tell you something i am i want to say a stan and i've never been a stan of anything or anyone really um and then girlfriends came back on netflix and i was like okay that's it so that's how you gotta get me you gotta get me with the nostalgia um girlfriends came back moesha sister sister i hear they're getting one on one back again so i'm really excited about all the shows that really raised me like i grew up on a lot of these shows you know people be like yeah you wasn't outside you i i wasn't i wasn't outside i was inside um went to school okay did my homework and I sat down and watched TV. <laughs> you watch things as a kid and then you watch them as an adult, it hits different. Because watching it as a kid, obviously I couldn't relate. <laughs> I couldn't relate at all, but it was super important for me to see, you know, beautiful, attractive, intelligent black women on camera and all of their variety, right? As a little girl, I'm like, oh, okay, so this, these are, you know, these are some options. I might be her, I might be her, I might not, uh, we'll see what happens. And then to actually grow up and be like, oh damn, like I am these girls. <laughs> right to a certain extent part of my manners because i just assumed that everyone has watched girlfriends but if you haven't let me just read according to google this show is an assembly sitcom focusing on a mixed batch of black women who face life's tests and triumphs together from dating to divorce friends to family to relationships joan maya lynn and tony support each other despite their differing backgrounds learning about the true friendship in the process first aired September 11th, 2020, and the last episode was um, February 11th, 2008. This show ran for eight <laughs> years. Black women on screen talking about black issues and their black lives aired for eight years. This video is sponsored by Ebony Life. The Ebony Life app is a discussion forum where black women discuss health, beauty, relationships, parenting, colorism, and all the other topics we love to talk about as a community, but we don't always have the platform to do so. Ebony Life is black owned and black operated and can be downloaded for iPhone and Android users. Um, get comfortable. This girlfriend series is definitely gonna be like, we girlfriends. Like we gonna take our time. We gonna get through these episodes. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it episode by episode. We'll see how we'll see how this plays out. Like I don't wanna bore you guys, but um, I don't know if we're going to do episode by episode. Maybe maybe I'll group the episodes or just pinpoint certain episodes that I know. Like we touched on those topics either on my channel or these are just topics that we're talking about, you know, in 2020 today. Jumping right into the characters, right? So we have Joan. We have Joan. She's 29 years old and she's played by Tracy Ellis Ross, Diana Ross's daughter. She is the main character. She works at a law firm, so she is a lawyer. She's single. She's dating. She's looking. It's complicated for Joan, okay? She has a lot of entanglements. She has a lot of entanglements and a lot of issues with men because she lives by this script, right? She's very by the book, which is perfect for her occupation right because she's a lawyer she makes her own rules and she sticks to them if you don't stick to them it's either the jail for you or <laughs> baby what's the verdict because <laughs> honey lawyer's not here to play she's not here to waste time she's one of those women that feel like okay by this age i should have this i should have that i should have this i should have that and if i don't have that something is wrong we need to fix this problem immediately she's a control freak joan is a control 
freak. And honestly, it's the scariest thing in the world when you're watching someone on television and you're like, oh my God, I do that. I say that. Um, that's, that's me. Oh my God, is that how I sound? Is that how I look? Oh my God, yes, that's me. I'm that crazy. I'm just crazy. That's me. <laughs> I've had a few of those moments already, especially with Joan. Joan is a control freak. She has a three month rule in which she does not sleep with any man unless she has been dating them for three months. Hello, Peppa? We see, you know, we see her break that rule every now and again, but for the most part, Joan is very by the book to the script. And I will say that that's a character flaw of hers. I mean, it definitely works in her favor when it comes to her occupation, you know, her work, but love life and friendships, you know, when you, when you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, okay? I don't know what that means, but you gotta. But where Joan has so much control in her love life, she has absolutely no control when it comes to her friends. Joan is, the, yeah, she, you know what? She really is a pushover when it comes to her friends. She can't say no to her friends. She enables their toxicity. Why you can't be as strict with your friends as you are with these niggas that you date? I just be confused because Tony Childs needed Antoinette Marie Childress, AKA Tony Childs. Your name is Antoinette Childress. And we know you as Tony Childs. Like that just says a lot about Tony Childs and identity. Tony Childs is Joan's best friend. And I put best friend in quotes because we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna get there. We're gonna get there with Tony. I'm gonna take my time with Tony. I'm gonna take my time. Tony is played by Jill Marie Jones. I actually love Jill Marie Jones. <laughs> I follow her on Instagram. Beautiful woman. Love her work. Um, but as Tony Childs, honey, Tony Childs, I have her down as bougie, materialistic, um, hypergamous. Tony Childs is definitely hypergamous. Um, she's from the hood, but she don't claim it, aka the whole identity thing. Off the bat, the relationship between, between Tony and another friend, Maya, yeah, they're like night and day. They're like water and oil. It's just not mixing. Maya, we didn't get into her character yet, but I think a lot of people relate to Maya. I think for the most part, I would say Maya is the most relatable character. Like she's the character that everyone's like, okay, I'm Maya and such and such, or I'm such and such and Maya. Like everybody has that mixture of Maya, most relatable character in my opinion. Uh, Tony and Maya definitely clash because Maya reminds Tony of her upbringing, where she's from, and what she what she's trying so hard to escape. She's like, ugh, get me away from the hood and into Beverly Hills. And Maya is all, come to my crib, we barbecuing down the block. What's up? <laughs> Tony is hypergamous. Tony is willing to date white men. Tony wants to date a man of means, a man that is wealthy, a man that, you know, will take care of her. Isn't that what we talk about today, right? We talk about hypergamy, we talk about femininity. Tony is very feminine. Actually, all the women are, are very feminine in their own way. Those things are fine, right? Those things are fine. But with me and Tony, it's the bitchiness about it. <laughs> well, my boobs are perky and all of you girls have saggy boobs, so worship me. Like, it's that, it's that air. I love a bougie bitch. I love a bougie bitch. Don't get me, don't get me twisted. But it's the, I'm bougie and I'm better than you, so be happy i'm even here and the be happy i'm even here i could relate see <laughs> i could relate to that i i can yeah i can my biggest problem with tony is that i've i've had friends in my life that were the tony like tony is a bad friend and you can't make me think otherwise like i've had so many tonys in my life and if you come across a tony as far as a bad friend aspect it just scars you it's like uh i'm like uh. so it's hard for me to even admit that i have you know, I'm, I'm like Tony in some ways, simply because like just the friend, like scarring your friends thing. First episode, y'all, the first episode, I think it's called Toes. What is it? What's the name of the first episode? Hold on. Toe sucking. <laughs> That's the name of the first episode. I'll meet Joan, Tony, Lynn, and Maya, four friends entangled with each other's loves and lives. Things get interesting when Tony starts dating Joan's X. so that's what the netflix little bio says and that's that's my whole point tony being a very bad friend to joan so in the first episode you know we meet the women and tony breaks the news to joan that she's dating her ex this guy that apparently knows how to suck some toes honey Ooh. and joan wants to tell tony off joan wants to be like 
that was my last serious boyfriend we've been together for all of these years like i wanted to marry this man like the reason why they broke up was because Joan wanted to marry him and he wasn't ready for marriage. So Joan basically gave him an ultimatum and he was like, all right, I'm out. Now for Tony, you're my best friend. Why are you dating this man that I wanted to marry? <laughs> and he turned me down. And off the bat, Tony is just like, oh, it's not serious. You know, it's her ex. She'll be fine with it. Meanwhile, hold on, hold on, sis. This is Joan's birthday party. This is Joan's birthday party and her best friend. Let's really let's really talk about it. <laughs> it's my birthday party. And my best friend calls me and says, "Happy birthday." And in the next breath, my date for your party tonight is the dude that you was dating for X amount of years and you know you wanted to marry him but he didn't want to marry you, but it's all right, right? Because like y'all not together no more. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Ooh, so easy. Couldn't be me, okay? Couldn't be me. But Joan, Joan, Joan is like, oh, it's fine. You know, it's fine. I have a date. I have a date tonight. Doesn't have a date. And it's not fine. She can't. She, she's a people's pleaser. She's a friend pleaser. She wants to please her friends. As long as her friends are comfortable, it's okay if she's uncomfortable. And that makes me uncomfortable because that's how I am to an extent. It's always pleasing everyone else, making sure everyone else is comfortable, making sure everyone else gets home safe, making sure everyone else is tucked in and bed and, and fed and, and, and well read and, and all right. But I'm, I'm not even trying to get into the episodes yet, but I just had to give y'all an example real quick. Tony is a bad friend. I just, I have no, when it comes to friendship and Tony, I just be, I just be fighting my nails. Story time, story time. Mother ever said I had a friend like Tony. And that's why I'm like, you gotta be careful with the Tonys. You gotta like, you gotta get rid of the Tonys in your life. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but we will see Tony's character, you know, develop over time. This is just the beginning. In the beginning, I was like, get Tony out of here. <laughs> but, um, I had a Tony in my life. So, um, me and my friends were going out with this guy I was just dating or whatever and you know we all link up and she's like oh, okay so who's the guy who's the guy whatever I'm like <laughs> him with the locks you know low love locks low love locks so we get to the spot now and I had to go use the restroom so all my girls are in a section and my dude is in a section well he wasn't my dude but we was we liked each other and we we, we hung out he's in a section with his friends and my friends in a section I had to go use the bathroom I go use the bathroom I come back and my friend, before I even like step up to go to the um the VIP area, my friend is like, bro, Shorty is like, let's say, let's call her Tony. Tony is sitting on what was the boy's name? I don't even know his name, but Tony is sitting on your dude's lap. Like, should I smack her now or later? This is the energy my friend is giving me. So I'm like, oh hell no, my voice. I'm like, no 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 no. I look literally they're both looking at me it was just so awkward like they were both looking at me like she's sitting on her lap she's sitting on his lap and she's like he peeking from around her like is this all right like your friend is like sitting on my lap and I, who was it the way jesus in me does the jesus thank you i had to do one of those and you know what i'm so joan i'm so joan bro like i Yo, I did not, did not check it in that moment. Like, I was just confused. I really be in La La. Like, huh? He comes over to me. He's like, yo, you good? Like, your friend just sat on my lap. Like, I, 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 Nonsense. Nonsense. We gonna finish that story time on the podcast, okay? You gotta tune in to the podcast, okay? Maya Denise Wilkes, a.k.a. Miss Golden Brooks. Like I said, I feel like Maya was the most relatable character I, in my opinion i feel like she was the most relatable character um all of the women did amazing jobs acting out their parts absolutely love all of these women um but yeah so maya maya was jones assist assistant i believe she's from crenshaw i know she's from la but like the hood i believe it's crenshaw um she was a teenage mom but she ended up marrying her baby zeddy are now and her son jabari i have her down as the pro black conspiracy theorist like that, that's that's my part of maya like maya will pull up with the black facts in a second that's me maya also has like the crazy conspiracy theories maya's christian so she it's like the mix of the pro-black the conspiracies the christianity it's 
random. You never know what you're gonna get out of Maya. But one thing you do get out of Maya, which I think everyone loves, is the realness. Like Maya is gonna give you the real. Maya's gonna tell you what nobody else is gonna tell you the real about yourself, okay? But sometimes it's a little over the over the top. But Maya usually gives good sound advice. Um, I said she is judgmental though, hence the tagline, oh hell no. She ended up marrying her husband. Um, you know, and they're both they're both hard working nine to five black folk right young black folk nine to five working hard they got a kid they love each other you know we'll see we'll see different things happen within their marriage throughout the seasons but like i said starting off in the beginning they're like just black love black love black love black love um but miss maya honey miss maya <laughs> miss maya she comes to work I'm not even going to say Maya doesn't do her job because if you notice, Maya will come in with her book. Here's my pen. Maya will come in with her book and her pen and she's like, hey, Joan, you have a meeting at five and, you know, um, you have a date. It's supposed to be tonight as well. So Maya definitely does her job, but she also doesn't do her job. OK, there's times Maya is late to work. There's times Maya is not answering the phones. There's times Maya, she's supposed to be focused on her job and at her desk and she's kikiing with Joan in the office. But that also ties back to Joan. Joan, you hired this woman, you befriended this woman, and now this woman can take advantage of you because you're her friend, but you're also her boss, which means when Maya wants raises, Maya probably gets some raises, right? <laughs> um, when Maya, you know, Maya can call you and be like, hey, Jabari's sick, you know, I can't come in today knowing that that's probably not the proper protocol for calling out right so when it comes to work i would say maya definitely takes advantage of joan because again joan is a friend pleaser joan cannot tell her friends no joan can't reprimand maya even though she's her boss right she she, she can't she literally can't do it <laughs> and she literally can't do it and Girl, okay, I just, uh, just, uh, I just don't like it. Lynn Ann Searcy, she's a hippie, she's free spirited, she's revolutionary, um, and she's like a radical extremist. And one of the things that Lynn says, I'm like, oh shit, like I was just reading a thread about that on Twitter. <laughs> she's biracial in real life, and I think she actually fought for her character to be biracial as well because all of the characters were supposed to be black. Um, fully black. I do appreciate that they actually created that lane for a biracial woman to be a biracial woman on camera and for fully black women to be a fully black woman on, ca on camera. And as you watch some of the episodes, you really learn why that's important, right? You really learn that being biracial is nothing wrong with it, but your white side, it does play a, a role, right? Uh, so yeah, so Lynn met, Lynn met Joan in college. She has a few master's degree and that's what really, I think makes this realistic as well. She's educated. <laughs> Lynn has a master's degree in psychology and what else did she say she has a master's degree in african-american studies and I think she has like she has other like degrees and other Lynn is very well read and very well educated hence the revolutionary and radical thinking Lynn is the most educated out of her group but Lynn struggles the most and I think See, oh my god that just hit <laughs> today's sunday y'all hold on i just oh i just felt something in the atmosphere that just hit different lynn is the most educated on paper but she ain't got no paper she complains about her student loans she never has a job it's like lynn you have a master's degree go work somewhere go build something <laughs> go create something but she's so like fight the power thinking like oh I don't want to work for the man <laughs> Lynn is a lot of things Lynn is lazy Lynn makes excuses she's a bird Lynn is literally the definition of a bird just just fly <laughs> you know and again thank god she has friends that are stable that won't say no to her <clears throat> William and Joan that continuously take her into their house well <clears throat> Joan that will continuously enable her homelessness by letting her live with you. This chick was supposed to live with Joan maybe like a month. She was living with Joan for eight months or eight years or something like that. I can't remember. Child, how was it eight years? Oh, Lord. She moves from house to house. Lynn literally moves from house to house because she does not want to get a job. She would rather keep going to school, keep getting degrees, than to face the real working 
world and I don't get it. It's like, sis, you have master's degrees. Use one. You, use one. Like she was, she's literally, she was a bus boy at one point. And I'm just like, ah, good for beats. Good for beat back to me. That hit different. Um, Lynn was also adopted. And there is a couple episodes I want to um, definitely touch on. But Lynn was also adopted. She is biracial, but I believe she was adopted by two white parents. So her growing up as a biracial girl, but in a predominantly white neighborhood, she didn't have the privilege of growing up around African American culture. It makes a lot of sense as to why she took African American studies in college is because her whole childhood, she was pretty much deprived of that. So and she's proud of her black side she loves her black side but she wants to she just wanted to learn more about it um and then we do meet her sister in another episode we gonna have a separate video for that episode so don't you worry don't you worry your little boots um did i touch everybody william okay um william played by reginald c hayes i have william down as jones co-worker um he's william hmm william is very important to this show Especially for the early 2000s, like on TV, it was real hip hop. Like the music was real hip hop. Everything was kind of like that hip hop swagged out. So now we have this show where you, you see black people working in corporate America, right? So you have William. He's a Republican child, okay? <laughs> he probably would have been out here voting for Trump. But um, you have this black male Republican lawyer. He's a junior partner as well. He acknowledged that they are tokens. Um, they are token. They are the only black people working in this sea of white people in this law firm. I remember in one episode he was saying like, you know, black women aren't attracted to me because I'm not a thug and I'm not aggressive and you know, I'm a sweetheart. I, I, I have a good job. Like I'm kind. <laughs> I, I like to wear suits. And I'm not gonna lie. I was like, damn, it do, it do be hard. But gonna get into that episode we gonna get into that episode we not there this yet. is absolutely opinion based these are just my opinions on this show and these characters if you feel like these women are just completely toxic and you don't want to watch it you know what more power to you at least you know what type of content you will and will not consume that is great for me i personally love it i love the variety <laughs> i love the variety i love the chaos i love the solutions i love everything about it because for me it's just it's it's real life we, we see character flaws in all of these characters right of course nobody is perfect um i did see some comments because i asked and i'm gonna ask again in this video who you guys relate to the most out of all of these main characters who do you guys relate to the most and let me know if maybe you can't relate to any of these women at all i would actually love to hear your perspectives as well if you've watched it and you're like hmm, can't relate at all that's really interesting <laughs> i've never met someone who couldn't relate to girlfriends <laughs> honey we got eight seasons we got a lot to talk about honey okay but of course like comment and subscribe and i will see you at the next one bye